Hello everybody and welcome back to the uh, Java tutorial. I think it's our fourth episode now. Um, today we're going to be looking at some basic Java syntax. We won't go too deep, um, but for now we can just you, you just need to familiar, familiarize yourself with um, some of these standards in uh, how to write Java code. Um, so the first thing I want to say is that there are generally three um, types of lines that you uh, lines of code that you'll write. Um, in Java, I mean, this is general. Like there, there's a lot of um, uh, extensions to these rules. Like a lot of these uh, rules have um, multiple types of those. So um, for the first type, it's going to be starting and ending blocks of code. So um, a block of code um, starts with a curly brace and ends with a curly brace. So you see this class here the class, everything inside the class is, is considered a block of code. So all of this is considered a block of code. And it is surrounded by two curly braces. Same thing in the method. The, everything inside the method is considered a block of code because it, start, it is surrounded by curly braces. You could also just put curly braces in a method and you kind of organize your code like that. And you typically don't want to do that. It just, it's not typical. It's, it's not like, it doesn't look nice. Um, um, so you usually wouldn't do that, but it is valid. That is technically considered, like if I wanted to print out something, say system.out.println, uh, this is inside a, another block. And if I run it, we get this is inside another block. Um, we'll look more into blocks of code uh, when we do control flow, so uh, loops and if statements. Um, now the second type is statements. So the statements are like this. When you either call methods, um, declare variables, uh, the kind of thing that you need to know is that they all end with semicolons. So this isn't um, Python or um, JavaScript where they're not required, but everything here, uh, this is like C++ and C and all, all you know, standard languages where uh, everything has to, every statement has to be terminated using a semicolon. That's how the compiler knows where the statement ends and the next one begins. Um, so a consequence of that is uh, there's not really a need for white space. Like I could, like unlike Python, I could put this in there and it would still compile and run properly. Um, so because everything is so defined through the code, through the characters that you put in there, um, there's no need to... Uh, I mean, it's you. You should still indent your code to make it look nice, but uh, there's no need to. And it is a need, but it's not necessary for the compiler. You could put everything on a single line, and it would uh, it would still work. Um, and finally, uh, you have comments. So pretty simple. Uh, single line comments are, are two sl two forward slashes. So single line comments, and then multi line comments have the forward slash and the star, uh, and then they end with a star and then another forward slash. You could uh, start each line with a star, um, um, but it's not necessary. Everything in between uh, these two, the these two identifiers here will not be uh, read by the compiler at all. And single line comments, um, if the compiler will just simply not read anything on this line after the slashes. Um, okay, now let's get into variable declarations. So there are a bunch of types of variables. Um, soon we'll get into using classes as variables, but for now all you need to know is pretty much int, int uh, double, float, boolean, char, um, and string. So uh, the first ones I mentioned, everything but the string, are considered primitives. I'll talk about what that is in another video. Um, but... Uh, they're all lowercase. So if I wanted to declare an integer, I would say int um, i is equal to one. And this is considered a statement because um, I have a semicolon and it just, it's doing something to the code. It's not a comment and it's not starting or ending a block. Um, now I could access the value just by saying i. So system.out.println i, and it prints out one, the value. Um, now, if I wanted to change the variable, I could say i is equal to 3. Notice how I didn't repeat the name, or the type rather, 
uh, all variables are declared using this kind of syntax here. So type, so int, char, whatever. Um, then the name of the variable is equal to the value. And um, the value has to be of a type type. So it has to, the two types have to match there. Um, and also, uh, you don't need to, uh, or sorry, um, uh, for the names, there are restrictions, like there are reserved type or reserved names like int. So you can't just say int int because that's a reserved name. The compiler doesn't like that. Um, uh, types, like any type is, is uh, considered reserved. Uh, I'll put a link down below about um, with the whole list of reserved names. Um, so yeah, you can also do uh, double. If you don't know what that is, it's kind of, it's decimal essentially, so it was a float. So double is equal to 3.0. Um, double D is equal to 3.0. And if I print out D, it'll print out 3.0. Um, we'll do operations later on. It's 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 pretty simple, I think. Um, now for uh, you know, let's just do operations now. Why not? Um, okay, yeah. So um, operations, you have your uh, standard. You know your plus so uh, system dot dot printlin um, three plus five it prints out eight right it's pretty simple three minus five prints out negative two uh, three times five would print out fifteen three divided by five um, now here in Java um, if you have two integers um, on both sides of the di uh, of the division operator it will give you integer division so three divided by five is zero in integers. Now, if we make one of these a double, so 3.0 or 3.0 float, um, it, we get 0 0.6, which is the uh, decimal answer for it. Um, let's see, uh, your classic arithmetic operators, and then you also have something called a modulo. Um, so that's just the remainder. So 3 divided by 5, and what's the remainder? So 3 divided by 5, uh, 0, remainder 3. So it prints out 3.0. Um, now there's also a couple of other operators. Um, so these are, let me just look at my, uh, th so those were expressions. Um, now there are increment or uh, operator assignments. So if you want to say like i is equal to i plus three, this is equivalent to i plus equals three. So just shorthand for that. Uh, same thing works for i minus equals three. Um, uh, I divided by equals three, I times equals three, I modulo equals three. Uh, yeah, is that, yeah, wait, I think that, I modulo equals three. Oh, it works, okay, that's sick. Um, yeah, so you can put your arithmetic operators in there and it'll still, just, it'll, it'll just be the equivalent of I equals I operator, the value. Um, so it evaluates the right side and then assigns and then does the operation and, and assigns it to the left. Um, now for increment and de decrement operators, um, uh, so I, I'll, I'll comment the code after and I'll put it in there. Um, so uh, for increment and decrement, you can just say I plus plus. This is shorthand for I equals I or I plus equals one or I equals I plus one. So this is called a post increment because it perform it, it takes the value and then increments it um, now you'll see what the difference is now if I say I minus minus that's the equivalent to I minus equals one um, now if I say pre increment that's plus plus I it does the same thing except there's a catch or minus minus I so for example if I were to use I in an operation here so three times I um, I would get, I don't know what I would get. I would get zero because I guess I is zero. All right, I'll, you know, I'll just say I is equal to 15 right now, just like that. So three times I is 45, right? Now, if I say three times I plus plus, we should get the same result. So what it does is it takes the value of I, returns it, and then increments it. So I gets returned to the operation three times I, which is currently 15. And then now if I printed out I after this, dot println I, you should get 16 after. So because I has been incremented after that. Now, if I say plus plus I, you'll get 48 because it increments I and then returns the value to the operation. 
Um, so it's 3 times 16 and i is still uh, incremented. Um, same thing with minus minus. So minus minus i, you should get a 3 times 14, which is 42. Or i minus minus, you should get a 45 because the i has not been uh, decremented before the expression is evaluated. Um, yeah, okay, so that's pretty much expressions, and I'm, I guess that's a crappy intro into Java syntax, but, you know, um, we'll get into more. Uh, we'll get into methods in a bit, which is pretty exciting, and then we'll do uh, control flow and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's what you should uh, be looking forward to in the uh, in the future. So I'll see you then. Adios.